Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday. This week, we have with us Ali Azel. Hey, Ali, welcome back. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, inviting me again to your show. Absolutely. So, Ali, uh, on Tuesdays, we talk about teams, but before we dive into the universe of teams, uh, we do want to take a peek at your library. So share with us, what's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? Sure. So this, this is a it's a funny story because it's not, it, it, it is not an agile book. Um, I went through a, a, a rediscovery <laughs> of life. And, and uh, so I, got, I, I went a lot to a lot of se- seminars and I actually um, did a lot of self-help because I believe yeah, part of growing as a human, you probably should read some motivational books, <laughs> things that will guide you in life and help you. Obviously, it, it, this 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 book is very close to me. So the, the book is called the the Four Agreements. Now, the Four Agreements is uh, it's actually written by a shaman. <laughs> um, I believe he's now a uh, he's, he's he's a priest like in, the, in the church. So I'm not sure what the where he is now, but uh, that's what he was, he was. Last time I checked, was he was doing. So what, what so the Four Agreements? If for the people who haven't read this before, are be impeccable with your words. So your words have value. How you say things are important. So make sure the words you use are you know <laughs> uh, impactful and valuable. And you don't just say you know don't just throw words out there without realizing the impact that your words have out there. So the the other one is don't take anything personally. <laughs> this is very hard. This is this was very hard for me because I take everything personally. <laughs> yeah, special, and that one goes very well with the previous one because we accept that others are not impeccable with their words. Exactly. Yes, it works both ways. So everything in the, the four agreements works back to yourself as well. Yeah. So it's it's not just you. It's, it's also also things around you. And and I think part of don't take anything personal is also comes down to there are things outside of your control, and this really helps as an agile coach and a scrum master when you go to an organization or even as a product owner you might know you might know something that works really well but people might not be ready <laughs> for you they don't want to be that advanced as so you have to work with them and if you take things personally you you won't last very long in most organizations <laughs> especially in banking <laughs> because they have such a set ways of working and they don't really like that they, they bring you in to do to help them with the transformation and change but they get in your way at the same time <laughs> it's like it's a, it's a strange relationship. Not familiar not just from banking so what, yes. what are the other two agreements so the other, other two agreements is that don't make assumptions uh, I find this quite strong because ever since I've stopped making assumptions, it has you know it allows you to ask more questions. It, is, it kind of helps with the, with your coaching. You don't just assume that this is this happened because of this, but you 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 delve into it. You break things in. You know, it's, it's almost like you go to the root cause <laughs> and and then find out what the thing that happened. <laughs> why it happens and uh, you, you you look for facts rather than just making um, you know i assume this happened because of this it, it helps a lot with the way you interact with your teams uh, also uh, the last one the fourth one and probably my favorite one is always do your best you can only do your best you can't magically <laughs> produce something that you can't do so and that, in a way, it helps in the, to think about is this is the best I can do right now, but it doesn't mean that this is the best I can do forever. You continuously improve. This is why I, I, I take this four agreements and I, it's very useful for my agile journey. And I, I was just thinking as you were describing the four agreements that this might be a great team agreements conversation to start. Yes. Right, like just put the four agreements on the wall and go through them and ask the teams what they read into it. In the yes. context of working as a team, obviously, not not in any random context. No, hundred percent. It, it really helped. It has helped me in my life. It's helped me in my style of working with the teams. Um, and uh, uh, it's actually quite a short book as well. So I highly recommend checking it out. Um, I, I'm sure it comes on Amazon 
We'll Kindle put the deals. link on the show notes for sure, okay, just sure. to make sure that people. It's find not even it. expensive. It's like a couple of quid. It's not. It's it's definitely worth reading. Or even if you, I'm, I'm sure you can even find the PDF on, online. Um, they, they, they I'll, do... I'll put the link to the proper yeah. author sponsored <laughs> <laughs> shop. All right, cool. So uh, obviously, we were talking about the four agreements that are potentially also a contribution to helping teams get better. And today is Team Tuesday here on the podcast, and we want to hear a story of. You know, a team that went through a process of, uh, one would say, decay or self-destruction. But what we're really interested in is is those little behaviors or patterns that when they started, they were perhaps not that important. But now with the benefit of hindsight, when you look at this, you see that those were the, the first indications of something bigger, some anti-pattern brewing in the team. So tell us that story and start really from the start when when those behaviors weren't really that significant yet. Sure. So I have one example that I'm going to use this team as an example because there were so many (laughs) anti-patterns. I mean, you you go to one team, they have one or two or three, you know, but these guys had like 10 (laughs) at the same time, Um, which, which which is ironically, Agile helped them a lot. (laughs) <laughs> they already had this anti-pattern. So when they got together, they just amplified it. Um, so one of one of the anti-patterns I saw within this team was a hero worship. <laughs> um, what so what you, does that ha- mean? So, the, so, so what that meant was there was one developer. He was the hero of the company. Everything that happened, people would go to him. And they will... <laughs> treat him like you know and, and then that would what what that did was he it made him arrogant whether he wanted to or not that, that's a different story he came across very arrogant because everybody just you know bowed down to him whatever he said if he said oh we're going to start using um this technology everyone would say yeah, okay yes from tomorrow this is what we're going to be doing and the, the, this uh, this didn't help either i give you an example we went to a christmas lunch and the system had a problem and uh, they had to this is everybody was off nobody, nobody was you know this is our christmas lunch and you know they called him back he went in and then the managing director took a picture of him and put it on instagram saying look how great this person is he came from his lunch they were just making so many <laughs> um uh it, it was just it got to a stage where we when he came to the stand-ups or daily daily scrums, he would just basically dictate to everyone what they need to do. Yeah, so do what he, I he, tell you, everything will be fine. Exactly. And oh oh you you're too slow. I'll let I'll do that. So it got to a stage where the team was no longer learning because he was basically managing the product owner was no longer a product owner because he it was his say. Um he he decided what's gonna happen. Uh, in in the same team, he was the only one who was allowed to deploy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he went on holiday for two weeks. Nothing could go to production because only this person was allowed to deploy. So one of the things it took me it took me some time, but I had to get him out of that team. I actually removed him from that team and then moved him to another area where he could focus his we moved him to the architecture team because that's what that was that was his passion anyway. He didn't want to do date, you know, code build new things. He just wanted to be an architect eventually. And and he is an actually an architect right now, as we speak. He's been there 10 years now, he's doing the architecture. Um so he went out of the team. Now that this team, the team that demoralized, that didn't think that they can do anything without this person, <laughs> took some time to get that confidence built up again. Uh and we worked. It, it took a long time to get them to a stage where they felt comfortable to deploy themselves. They well, to actually tell us a little bit more them. about that. What were some of the things that you did with the team with the intention of helping them build their self confidence? Sure. So one of the things that was to actually get them involved with the business a lot more. Uh, so we 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 actually hired a contractor to come in to help them with the, educating them on development practices. Um, so we hired a better, you know, a, a more senior developer to come in, pair program with them, and to help them. Um, we basically brought all the, we brought everything, anything possible that we can help them to build that uh, foundation again. So I, I went back to the drawing board. We did, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a game called Get Kanban. Get Kanban, yeah. 
Yes, this is a board game. It's a simulation. So we played that with them, which really, really motivated them to start, <laughs> the, 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 you know, getting back into action. Um, we hired, uh, we b- basically sent them to training courses. We there, there was just so many. It wasn't just the scrum things. It was more um, uh, general things around. The, you know we asked them what they actually want to where do they want to be in the next next six months you know they had aspirations goals we try and focus on those we had team agreements which we didn't have before we worked we, we visualized the work that we had on the board we got management coming to our sprint reviews which was amazing because they got good feedback just things that they never even so the feedback would normally go to the hero and never come to them then the hero would never come back and tell them oh this is what management said. So we actually had them getting involved within the organization. I find most of the time um, people want to do great work. Um, and it's amazing when they can actually show that work to the to the customer. It's actually and- interesting that you tell this story in the context of the Four Agreements book, because you, you talked about how important reading self-help books was for you as a scrum master. And actually, th- this reminds me that many years ago, I, I went through therapy and I realized that actually the process of knowing myself, of understanding myself better, helped me empathize and understand others better too. Right. When we looked at when we look at ourselves, like in your case, reading those books, when we look at ourselves as uh, worthy of investing, right, invest time, invest effort in getting better, then we start to look at others as worthy of investment, right? Like you could have looked at that team and go to manage and say, hey, this team is over. Just get, you know, five new developers. Let's let's get these guys out into some other teams and and let's just start from scratch. But you didn't do that, right? Like you helped the team grow. Uh, obviously not only yourself, the whole organization did, that's important, but you focused on helping the team grow. And I think that for us as Scrum Masters and also for our teams, we really need to learn to be able to make those investments. Now, not all teams will react positively to this, right? Then some teams do need to be broken apart and split into other teams so that they get embedded in a different culture. But obviously we shouldn't do that without even trying. 100%. If if, if I did that every time I I, I met it, I would have no teams ever. (laughs) And, And why do they hire us? You know, they hire us because we're there to help them. It's not just to come and implement the scrum. I mean, if you, if you just want to implement the Scrum, you can watch a YouTube video. You know, do those ten minutes <laughs> YouTube videos. That's it. Go on down, go go do it. We're there because we have worked with other teams. We've seen bad behaviors. We've seen great behaviors, and we support. We're, we're helping them to get to a stage where they're proud of their work. When I wake up in the morning and I don't want to go to work, that's I, that's that's when I know I don't want to work with that organization anymore. When I wake up, I want to be excited to go to work. I want to be you know, so happy to meet my team again. Another day, another challenge. Let's go. You know, <laughs> so if, 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 if that's not the feeling I get, then I would be disappointed with work. Absolutely. It's a great uh, sign for us to think about what's next. Thank you very much for sharing this story with us. Tuesday is team day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.